Well, good morning, Oakham Baptist Church. Today is Good Friday, and we're going to have a time of looking at God's Word. We're going to do this through um, looking at the crucifixion through the eyes of Barabbas, who was released instead of Jesus when the crowd were given a choice. And this is then going to be followed by um, a communion. So if you'd like to prepare the elements of that, just get some bread and some juice or wine, uh, you'd be very welcome to join in that, which Julie Leaf is going to be leading. Thank you. Hi, my name is Barabbas. What a week I've had. Last Friday I was due to be executed by crucifixion, and now here I am talking to you lot. Well, let me tell you about myself. I was brought up as a good Jewish boy learning all the great stories of our nation Israel from my parents. The Exodus, taking the promised land, King David, the greatest king who ever lived. Now every kid in Israel wants to be like him. I also learned of the failures, worshipping other gods, exile in Egypt, exile in Babylon. But then God always seemed to smile on his people and bring them back. My parents would also tell us about our glorious future, when God's Messiah, God's anointed one, the saviour of God's people, would come and rescue us. I remember thinking, bring it on, God, because we might have a glorious past and a promising future, but the present, well, that's pretty miserable. Since being a young boy, it felt like I was living through the least significant time of our history. Trapped between a wonderful past and a glorious future, but now living under Roman occupation. I hated what was happening to our nation, and so I joined up with the rebels to stick it to the Romans. Who says Israel can't be triumphant again? I had a dream and a hope that there would be a widespread uprising and we could free our people from oppression. I was a pretty good rebel, even though I say so myself. I started with the sort of small scale stuff, robbing tax collectors and the like. And then I moved up a few leagues into attacking the Roman outposts. I enjoyed being a freedom fighter. And I have to say I was making quite a nice living from it, from all the plunder. As time went on, I became the leader. And my Jewish countrymen, who were desperate to find their warrior king, saw me as a folk hero. <laughs> but let me be honest with you folks. The high ideals that I had started out with had all been tarnished. In reality, I was a self-serving, murdering thief who had the blood of many innocent people on my hands. And I became arrogant and blasé, which was my ultimate undoing, because I was caught. I was charged, tried and found guilty of insurrection, a crime punishable by death. Uh, I, was, I was condemned to be flogged and then crucified. Was I guilty? Yes, I was. I had murdered, I had stolen, and I deserved the punishment I was to receive. And then Jesus turns up. I first started hearing about Jesus around three years ago. He, per he burst upon the scene, teaching, healing people, and doing all sorts of miracles. There were stories of him feeding four or five thousand people at a single sitting. He would just take some bread and some fish and just keep breaking it and handing it out. And it never seemed to run out. It was rumoured he walked on water. And wherever he went, he drew a crowd. And he also drew the displeasure of the Jewish leaders, particularly the Pharisees. Boy, could he tie them in knots with his knowledge of the scriptures and his quick mind. I did once go and hear him speak. It was on a mountainside in Galilee. I was expecting a bit of a magic show, you know, water into wine, walking on water, miraculous healings. But there was none of that on this occasion. He just talked to the crowd. He was a natural leader. He had charisma, intelligence, and most important of all, authority. The crowds flocked to him. Thousands of people just hushed down as he shared his teaching. But I wanted to scream out, for goodness sake, man, do something positive. Can't you see that these people need freedom? 
Do something to challenge the system. But then I began to listen. He was really engaging. He talked with authority about things that are real. He used simple words and stories to explain things that affect all our lives. And I realised he was challenging the system. In fact, more than I had ever done. And he spoke about getting right with our Heavenly Father. He talked about God as a real person who wanted a real relationship with us, a truly Heavenly Father, not an angry God of rules. Now that was challenging the system and the Pharisees didn't like it a bit. He also said, come to me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. How I wanted to do that. How I wanted a fresh start. I was weary of my lifestyle. Everything within me was screaming to go up and to follow him. But I made a choice. I turned away, convincing myself I had a higher calling. But when I turned away, I think something deep inside broke. But I never forgot him or his penetrating words. And then last weekend, I saw him again. Into Jerusalem he came, riding on a donkey. The crowds went wild. They cut down palm trees and threw their cloaks for the donkey to walk over. It was an incredible sight. Hosanna, they shouted. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King of Israel. But I knew, I knew trouble would be waiting for him. I could see the look on the Pharisees' faces. I was arrested the following day, which I've told you about. My fate decided, death awaiting me. And then Friday morning happened. I was sitting in my cell, reflecting on my life. Not good, I have to say. I was also thinking about the flogging and crucifixion that would happen later in the day. Just killing criminals isn't enough for the Romans. They insist on degrading and shaming them as well. This starts with the flogging. The Roman whip is made of strips of leather into which is embedded bits of metal and bone and stone. And when you're flogged, it rips lumps of skin and muscle off your back, leaving raw bones and sinews. Few survive a Roman flogging even when it's not followed by crucifixion. And then there is the crucifixion. You are stripped naked and forced to carry the crossbeam through the crowds up to Golgotha. The crowds are free to spit and kick and jeer. When you arrive at the place of crucifixion, the crossbeam is attached to the upright beam which is laid on the ground. You are then tied and nailed to the cross through the wrists and through the ankles. If you're lucky, someone may offer you myrrh mixed with wine to dull your senses. I decided to have a gallon of the stuff. The cross is then raised up and then dropped into the hole, the impact of which dislocates most joints in your body. And there you hang, naked and in agony, hoping the end will come soon. The threat of death by Roman flogging and crucifixion put fear into everybody. Nobody survives it with their dignity intact. The toughest and bravest of men all go to pieces. I would have done anything to avoid that shame, that humiliation and that agony. But then all my thinking came to an abrupt end. I heard the crowd shouting. I asked the guard what was going on and he told me they had arrested Jesus of Nazareth. On what charges? I asked. Nobody knew. For what? Nobody knew. And then the strangest thing happened. They were calling my name. Barabbas. Barabbas. 
Release Barabbas! Release Barabbas! My head was in a spin. I'd accepted the fate that I deserved, yet here they were calling my name. Barabbas! Barabbas! They continued to shout. The next minute, the guard unlocked my door and I was told I could go. How? Why? I asked. My guard explained that Pilate had offered the crowd a choice. A prisoner could be released. Pilate was expecting they would choose the man who a week earlier they'd welcomed into Jerusalem by laying down their cloaks. But in a bizarre twist, the crowd chose me. What a choice. It was my name, they shouted. I cannot find the words to describe how fantastic it was to be released. I was overwhelmed. But I could not understand how they could choose me and not him. As I left and walked into the bright sunshine in that tightly packed courtyard, I expected an undeserved hero's welcome. But they ignored me. The ringleaders in the crowd appeared to be the religious leaders and they were focused on one thing, seeing the back of Jesus who had dared to challenge them. And then they started to chant, crucify him, crucify him, crucify him. And then the crowd joined in, crucify him, crucify him. Pilate seemed to be in a fix and in total exasperation said, OK, crucify him. I was quite near to Pilate. I saw the desperation in his eyes. Why did such a man of authority allow himself to be manipulated by the mod, mob when he should have been protecting Jesus? He washed his hands of the whole situation and turned away from Jesus just as I had done, a broken man. My head was in a complete whirl. I was guilty, murder, theft, rebellion. I absolutely deserved to die. And there was Jesus, man of healing, man of teaching, man of gentleness, man of honesty and integrity, a man who claimed to be the son of God, and he was going to die in my place. I wanted to run, but I felt duty bound to witness what was going to happen. First, the barbaric flogging. Then a crown of thorns pushed painfully onto his head with the soldiers kicking and mocking. And then that long, long walk to Golgotha. Jesus had been so weakened by the flogging that he could scarcely carry the crossbeam of the cross. Eventually they had to get someone out of the crowd to help him. I half wished they'd chosen me. Eventually the procession arrived at Golgotha. He was first bound and then nailed to the cross. I was pleased to see that he was offered the wine and the myrrh, but he refused it, as if it was important for him to be fully conscious. The cross was lifted and then dropped into the hole. And there he hung, to die as a common criminal. I heard him say, Father, forgive them, for they don't know what they are doing. It was so wrong. He was there in my place. And not only was he there in my place, my slate had been wiped clean. I had been tried and sentenced and under the law I could not be retried for the same thing again. I was more than forgiven. I was totally free. Not even any charges to answer to. And so there I stood in that place of horror for six hours. Thinking about my life and the life of Jesus that had brought us both to this point at the cross. After three hours, something significant happened. It was early afternoon. 
and for three hours the skies darkened. This was more than just an execution. It was an event with heavenly significance. After six hours of agony, life flowed out of him. By this time I was fairly close to the cross and I clearly heard him say, it is finished. Strangely, not a cry of defeat, but a cry of victory. It is finished. It is complete. It is done. No more. A Roman soldier who a few hours earlier had been mocking and kicking Jesus and who had been casting lots for his clothes looked up and said what I already knew. Surely this man was the Son of God. And there I stood looking at the Son of God who had died in my place. How do I respond to that? Come and see the King of Love See the purple robe and crown of thorns he wears Soldiers mock, rulers sneer As he lifts the cruel cross Lone and friendless now he climbs towards the hill We worship at your feet Where wrath and mercy meet And the guilty world is washed By love's pure stream For as he was made sin Oh, help me take it
to earth to restore us to your help. Here we bow in all beneath your searching eyes. From your tears comes our joy. From your death our life shall spring. By your resurrection power we shall rise. We worship at your feet where wrath and mercy meet. And the guilty world is washed by love's pure stream. Oh.